Hey guys, Sneaky Kitty Game Dev here, and this is going to be the last video of the Claymore series, where I more so am just kind of going through the modular route and trying to explain some ways that you can handle other stuff. So in this video, we want to handle it for basically make it a team-based thing. So what we're going to do here is set it up so we have two teams, but we don't want to build a, we don't really have much of a way to get the team because our Claymore does, is not going to know about any of the classes from something like our tutorial character or anything like that. So the way we want to handle this is through a virtual function that we can override for when we go to make a child class of a Claymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a virtual bool. This is one going to be just uh, called can, can explode. I guess that's one way to put it. Then we want to take in an actor and call it, or we're just going to call it over other actor. Keep it in line with the on overlap begin. Generate the definition and if it is valid other actor all we're going to do is return true. Otherwise return false. That's all this function is going to do. And in the on overlap begin we have our check. So if can explode and we do a test from other actor then well we explode. So we're going to be overriding this function when we make a child of it. And that's kind of the gist. So I'm going to go ahead and run the live coding just so everything kind of gets set up. And then we're going to go ahead and make our other class. Okay, that's done. Let's go ahead and make a new class. This one's going to actually be in our, you know, our projects class. So we're going to make, go to all classes, search for Claymore. And we have our object actor Claymore. And click public. And this one's just going to be called, uh, let's do Team Claymore. I guess that's a, well, it's a name. Okay, once that's done, we're going to have it fail. We can close down the editor. And we're going to have some issues finding a Claymore. Because remember, it's in a different, well, heck, it actually kind of tells you here. It's in a different module. So we want to make sure we add it. So as you can see, add a reference to module Claymore module in Claymore tutorial build.cs. So I'm just going to alt enter to be extra lazy. And all it's doing, well, literally that, is it is going to, where am I at? It's going to be our projects build.cs and our public dependencies, yeah, public dependencies. It's just adding our module at the very end. Kind of like what we did with our Claymore module build.cs where we added its own, our own module to it so we can access it, and Niagara. It's the exact same thing. But once we have that, this should start to fix itself up. So it quits whining, not sure why it's included twice. But let's go ahead and compile. Okay, we are good to go. We compiled, yay. So really the only thing we're doing is just a, a check. So we're gonna make a protected section and remember our virtual function, which was, uh, was it can explode. We're just going to override that, create our definition, and we do want our super. So bool b can explode is going to equal our parent call. So if b can explode, and at the very end we return b can explode. So we're following the structure similar to that of the take damage function that is provided for the A actor class. So if you recall, our parent function returns, well, true if the other actor is valid. So basically, if the other actor is valid, we want to do a team check. So here we would normally have some form of perhaps like an interface or a base class for our character, something like that. We don't have that. We're not working with that, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to make a simple enum in our character class. So our, our project's tutorial character. So it's going to be, heck, we really don't even need this to be a U enum. So we're just going to enum E team. I guess that's a decent name. And we're going to have, I guess, red and blue. Fancy. So once we have that, we can go ahead and include our Claymore tutorial character. Claymore tutorial, then Claymore tutorial character dot h, and we want to do a cast. So if where is it? 
a claymore tutorial character character equals cast a claymore tutorial character and we're casting from other actor then we want to do more stuff here's where we would check our team otherwise what we want to do is set b can't explode equals to false so if this fails we just don't want to explode so that kind of indicates that some other actor has you know crossed into i guess in front of the claymore so now that we have that we want to set ourselves up a team so let's go ahead and set a u property do my stuff down here don't know why i copied that part but edit uh, let's do We'll do edit anywhere. So we'll set up two different teams. So E team, team. And now that I think about it, yeah, we do need this to be a UENUM. So UENUM, blueprint type. That's just so we can expose it to uh, Unreal's reflection. Well, through the Unreal header tool, basically. And we have our team. So by default, I'm not really worried about what it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to go and give it a category equals Claymore, just so I can actually find it a little bit easier and what we want to check is let's go to our team claymore let's add another property so you property edit i'll just do edit defaults only and category equals claymore and we're going to do e team let's do oh let's see what could we call this explode on team that'll be of the type so we're going to go ahead and actually move our include of the tutorial character to our header just so it resolves that not sure what you're whining about cannot use the raw enum as a type for member variables right t enum is byte of e team and there we go so we're going to set explode on team we're going to see if that matches our character's team so if explode on team equals character now we need to get our character's team so we're going to create a simple getter function so e team get team and it's just going to return team nothing more so if explode on team equals character get team then again we want to explode so that's really all we have to it so by default if he can't explode is true we want to kind of continue to make that true so here's where we can kind of do our different checks so we can have a couple different things so to kind of i guess you could say clean this up a bit because right now we would literally have nothing in here because there's nothing to put so can we do this no we cannot can i wrap it no i cannot all right fine be picky so i'm going to move this to its own line and what we're going to do is do ourselves a check. So if is valid, or I guess we don't really need to do that since the if valid check was going before. We want to check if character is, you know, not a null pointer. So if character and the explode on team equals character get team, then we know we're good to go. So let's do another check. So if character is invalid or meaning this is valid if it fires this or explode on team does not equal get team if that's the case we want to make sure we cannot explode meaning that we are on the same team or the team that is not supposed to explode so once we have that we can go ahead and give it a try yeah forgot i got to do the t enum as byte as well so t enum as byte of the type e team fun can we go now? Good. So far. Yeah, I guess we're good. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and open up our... Actually, we don't need our blueprint uh, thing anymore. Well, I guess actually what we can do is change the parent class. So let's open it on up. And go to class settings. Parent class is Claymore. Let's search for Claymore again. We're going to grab Team Claymore. Like so and compile so we still have everything set up kind of in the same manner but now we have explode on team 
as an option. So by default, it's set to red. So I want to set, I want to basically get my characters and set them up a little bit differently. So I want the server to be blue, and then I want the client to be, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, client to be red. So this will be our client. This will be our server. So I want to set this one to auto possess player zero. So I'm again clicking the wrong stuff here. And let's go ahead and open that up. You should have. Did I expose it? Yeah, team. Where is team? Okay, search for team. There it is. So by default, I want the team to be blue. No, wait. I want the team to be red. Because I'm exploding. Okay, I'm exploding on red. So by default, the team of the character is going to be red. So our client is going to be red. Then for the server, I want the team to be blue. So it should kill the client, but not the server. So let's give this a try. Okay, so let's walk in front of it on the server. As you can see, nothing is happening. So this indicates like, hey, maybe Team Blue placed it down. But now when I go in front of it on the client, it explodes and it kills our player. So, that, uh, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly reiterate what happened. So what we did to kind of keep things separated from each other is in our Claymore, we have all the base functionality that we need. We just had a virtual function that dictated whether or not we wanted it to explode. So in our on overlap begin, we just checked if we can explode. Then we run the exact same logic that we did before. So we take damage on the client or the player that ran into it. Then we destroy the Claymore, which in turn spawns our Niagara effect and continuously destroying process for the actor. Now in can explode, by default we just simply check if the other actor, the actor that crossed it, is valid. If it is, we return true. So now that we have that, we override it. So we check B can explode. So what this line is doing is it's just running this function here, or this logic here. So basically, because in our case, other actor is valid, so it's going to return true. B can explode is being set to true. So we do our check. If B can explode, we want to cast to our character. And if that is true, meaning the player that overlapped it is of the type character that we want to, you know, you know, possibly destroy or trip the claymore, so to speak. If that is not the character, meaning this cast failed, then we want to set B can explode to false so it doesn't blow up. And if this ends up being true, meaning the cast was successful, we do this check. So hence the OR operator. So we want to check and see, okay, since the character is valid, if we, if is our explode team, like the team that we want it to explode with, which in our case would be red, if that does not equal the character's team, then again, we want to set it to false, meaning we are on a different team that we don't want to explode. So for example, didn't I have... I thought I had a uh, player placed down. Yeah, okay. So, for example, if I swap these around now, so I have the default team set to red. I'm going to set it, yeah, leave it at red. I'm going to set the server to blue. So the server does not set this off. Why is there two clients here now? So the server doesn't set it off, but the client does. If I were to switch these, so I'll set this to red. Wait a minute. I'm confused now. Okay, let me go to the outliner. Third person character. Where even is it? Okay, I guess that's a bug. Let me restart the editor really quick. There we go. So, it's back. All right, so we have our team set to blue. And by default, our character is set to red. So our client is going to be red. 
and our server is going to be blue. So, and we want to explode only on the team red. So server does not make it go boom. It does nothing. Client makes it go boom. So if I were to switch these now, so the team is red for the server, and third person character is blue, then we get the opposite result. Team blue, server, red. Then we get the opposite result. So the client can walk in front of this claymore, no problem. But the server, that team now dies. And if I swap the explode on team, it is now reversed again. So now the server can walk in front of it, no problem. But the client dies when it walks in front of it, sets it off. So that's one way you can kind of handle it. So basically when you go to place the claymore, you place it base, you basically set explode on team equal to your client's team or the opposite of your client's team, or you just basically mismatch. I'm sure you get the idea, but anyways, that's going to be all for this series. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below where I have a team deathmatch series just for patrons. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my discord and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.